Hi, this is Ghostlike. In the previous video we implemented the enumerative CFR algorithm and played a couple of rounds against the trained player. In this video we'll go over the Monte Carlo version of the algorithm. The reason for that is that we can't use the regular one on games with more states than there are atoms in the universe, so we need a sampling version of it. We need to take the original CFR algorithm and convert it to something that can be scaled up on very large games. Of course, we won't be able to scale it either way with the dictionary approach we were using so far, but with the Monte Carlo version, instead of feeding the game sequence to the algorithm row, we can pass it through something like a neural net first and feed it a binary hash instead. But for the time being, let us just focus on getting the algorithm down. The primary difference between the enumerative and the sampling version of the algorithm is how the reward estimates are handled. The enumerative algorithm traverses the game tree in a depth first fashion. Touching every single node in the process, so its reward estimates are perfect. It propagates back the exact reward as you can see on the screen here. But the sampling version is more like how you'd play the game in real life. You can't really save and reload to try out the different possible routes. Instead you get uh, to pick one action per node and that's it. If you are sampling, you can only bring back the reward from a single particular node, as for the rest you have to estimate it. Even if you are familiar with the actor critic algorithm, the way this estimation is done might surprise you. In the game theory literature from which the CFR algorithm comes from, this variant is called outcome sampling. Let me first present how it was done originally, without any of the variance reduction tricks that were introduced uh, later. You'd run the algorithm as usual, get a single terminal reward and propagate it backwards, as for the other possible actions you'd just assume that their value is zero. Then you'd update the policy using that. And this straightforward Monte Carlo version of the algorithm does in fact work. If you run it for long enough it would converge. But the variance of such an approach is huge and it would take a lot longer than with proper estimates, which are also called baselines in the literature. The equation for the reward estimates is what I've written on the screen here. To explain what these variables are, x is a random variable representing the reward. For the paths that the algorithm takes, this variable x would be the reward coming from the nodes further down the tree, divided by the probability of picking that action. And for the paths that aren't taken, that variable would be zero. I'll explain what that means using an example later. Next, why is a random variable of the estimate, or the baseline as it is called? It is the estimate in expectation divided by the probability of picking that particular action. If the path was taken, it would be plugged in here along with the reward, otherwise it would be zero. Lastly, the expectation of y is just a constant. These last two terms cancel each other out in expectation. Let me show you what I mean. Suppose the probability of taking the action leading to the topmost path is something like 50%. Then here I am just substituting the x, the y and the expectation of y. This is for when the path is taken, but when it isn't the x and the y are just zero. If you take a look at what is happening, if you... Actually, you'll see it written like this in the papers and in the algorithm, but uh, let me distribute the division so it is more clear as to what the actual random variables are. Now, since the paid probability is 50%, the x and y variables will only be active 50% of the time. And if you look closely... If you look closely at these terms and sum them up, you'll see that they cancel out in expectation. Anyway... If you can understand that much, then you know what we will be implementing next. I'm just showcasing the results from the Variance Reduction Monte Carlo CFR paper here, so you can get some visual impression of the differences between the regular and the Variance Reducing version of the algorithm. The difference between the CFR Plus version, which was the one we worked on in our last two videos, and the regular one is that max zero update. Regular CFR can have negative regrets in the array and clamps them during normalization, but the plus version instead clamps them during the update. The Oracle baseline is probably just the reward estimate taken from a fully trained player and given to a starting agent. Let's finally get into it. The hard part is figuring out what to do, but once you have the requisite understanding, the implementation comes naturally. 
papers like the one I showcased earlier are not the easiest reads, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the algorithm itself is complicated. The code I am scrolling through right now is very similar to before. Before I started the recording, I did a bit of work to set things up before I realized it would be better to implement the algorithm as I go along. I made some minor adjustments. Since normalization might result in an array that doesn't sum to one exactly, but something very close to it due to numerical imprecision, instead of the arbitrary thing that I had before, I just had the loop start from scratch here. It is one of those things that was at all in my side, but realistically, since we are using 64-bit floats, would never matter. We'll be using the sample function to pick the actions in the sampling agent. What we'll need to start off first is define what the estimate arrays are. Since we will be doing the equivalent of multiplying them by the opponent probability, like in a regular CFR, we will want to track both the numerator and the denominator, so the best thing to do would be to make them an array of float pairs. What we want to do first is get all the rewards, in other words, implement that equation from the Excalidro canvas. Once we have that, we can focus on other things, like updating the value estimates. That can be left for later. What we need to do now is only focus on the step we need to make and nothing else. We'll work over this slowly. By moving things around you can get into the swing of things and cache yourself into the code. My first instinct was to go right for the throat and just blow everything straight in, but then I thought it would be better to make it as much as possible like in the equation. So why am explicitly denoting the x, the y and the estimated y variables? And I'm sorry for the confusion, it should be expected y. Now that the variables have been established, we need to fold them into the proper branch. Except for all the easily fixable errors, this is pretty good. This way of doing it isn't necessarily right for exploration though, and in a future video I'll talk about extending this so it does importance sampling, and makes use of behavioral policies, but don't worry about that for now. Conceptually we have this very nailed down. From here it should be easy to implement the rest. We'll start off by renaming that misnamed estimated y into expected y, and then let us implement the get values function. Hope you found this relaxing. What we need to do next is implement the update values function, otherwise those value arrays will permanently be at zero. In programming, the easiest way to do something is most often the right way as well. So what we'll do here is plug the update function into the loop. Like so. I consider programming in this way sketching in code. Now that we have a sketch, we need to do the actual line work. Well, enjoy the music while that is happening.
Anyway, that's it for today's video. Hope you learned something. If you have, please like and subscribe. I need it. I really, really need it. I can't live without them. I'm just joking. In the next video, we'll integrate what we've done today with the rest of the system and test it out. We've done a lot to set the foundations for this in the previous video, so it will be pretty easy. This has been Ghost Like, and I hope to see you in the next video.